Hey House Plant friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to tell you about how my plants are that I bought in my first plant haul of January and February. I actually have been keeping track, okay? And I have some pretty fun, exciting news. I have kept most of all of them alive, which I feel like, and I've never kept track before, but I feel like that's a, pretty generally a tall order for me. I am kind of kill happy with plants. Like if I don't like it, I'll just like toss it. I have some fun news because I have done really well keeping my plants and I'm gonna tell you and show you a comparison update. So you're gonna see me when I got it, showing it off and then the plant now. And I think that that will be really fun. So if you like this kind of update content, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Maybe join the YouTube channel memberships. It's only $5 a month and you get to join a discord full of plant people from all over the world. It's a really fun time. And I just wanna thank Zimp so much for sponsoring this video. Zimp is where I get all of my fun glasses and you will hear more about them at the end of this video. You can check them out though at the first link in the description. If you want to scroll through some super cute and cheap only in money, not in make, while I'm talking about all this stuff, you're welcome to check out Zimp. So I've only killed four plants that I first got up this year. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time talking. My cat just sprinted inside. So I've only killed four plants that I got from January and February, and those are going to be the Begonia Fedor that I got. This thing dried out way too fast and it ended up dying. My water plants that I got and then put in those cute glass bowls. The variegated red stem that I got kind of on impulse and then the Boston Fern Rehab. It's actually not dead yet, but I'm looking at it and I can tell you that it is dead. The whole point was to kind of try to like bring it back, but I think it was just too dead to begin with. So those are the plants that I did kill, but the plants that I kept alive, let's get into the update on them. The first one is actually going to be this orb, which you've kind of been seeing me talk about a lot lately. And this one, the Ripsalis is definitely bigger than it was when I first got it. It's gotten quite big. And also the cactus actually has some really cute little new paddles on top. I'm sure the other cactus has grown too, but you know, cactus grow so slow that it's kind of hard to keep up with it uh, if you're looking at it every single day. The Ripsalis is touching and bending against the top of the orb now. So it has definitely gotten bigger. It is still alive, thank goodness, because this was a little expensive. But yeah, cute. I still love it as much as the first day I got it. Highly recommend. The next plant that we have on the list is going to be my global green pothos. I got this at the very beginning of January and I still have it. I thought ahead and I actually got a self-watering pot for it. So this pot actually slides into a hanging pot and then you pour the water in to the hanging pot and it will bottom water actually. It is such a good idea. I think it's like a Wally Grow called a loop pot. But yeah, this is my global green pothos and it's gotten more and more variegated. It does get direct south facing light. And I can definitely say I have noticed a difference in the green leaves getting more and more variegated and then the side that doesn't get hardly any light uh, is getting pretty green. Here's the side that gets a lot of sun. Nice variegation, and then the side that doesn't really <laughs> get any. Love this plant. I don't know how much bigger it's gotten. I haven't cut it, but um, I think pothos just grow really slow, so. The next plant is actually going to be the Hoya Australis, and I do have a pretty happy update for this plant. So this plant I got as two separate plants, and I potted them up into one pot, and it has gotten quite a considerable amount bigger, uh, especially this middle one right here has really kind of taken off. And this one right here, which I got as two leaves, has finally just started to put in uh, growth. So you can kind of see these two new baby leaves right here. Super dark, but hopefully you can see these. Everything else has given me quite a few leaves. I think this plant grows slower than I thought it would. This is Hoya Australis Lisa. I mean, all in all, it's doing pretty good. So yeah, I don't know. It kind of still looks small, but I promise like just looking at it, it is so much bigger, so. The next plant I have to show you is my Hoya pubicalix, which is a considerable amount larger than uh, when I first got it. It's actually like looped a ton. It had a bunch of runners, so I kind of tried to wrap them around the top of this little part right here. You can see his, he's throwing lots of little hands everywhere. Um, he has lots of dark new growth, all these kind of darker leaves that you're seeing in the back right here. Um, all of these are brand new growth. I mean, he's quite big. He's definitely a really fast grower. I bought this because I wanted a Hoya that would go, grow pretty fast. And 
I don't think I was let down. He is constantly putting out these really nice dark leaves. He's really full, way more full than when I first got him. And I'm really, really happy with this. This was only $16 and this is like one of the most fulfilling plants I have. I just love look looking at those little arms, that's so cute. Yep, he's super full and bushy now, which is really, really fun. This next plant I had to show you is also really, really exciting. This is my spider plant. Now, when I first got this plant, it was really sparse. Um, I got it, it was $30, I think, from Edwards. And it was pretty darn sparse, and now it's actually, like, throwing a ton of hands. Like, there are tons of new babies growing out just from the top alone. I mean, you can see all the nice new growth. And on top of that, I wanted one that would give me a lot of babies. And this one has definitely not let me down. I mean, there are new babies all over the place. This thing flowers like crazy. I don't know, it, it's literally like, it's given me so much growth. It does so well. I. I'm so happy I got this. This plant has been so fulfilling. And just watching like all the new arms come out, like this is brand new, this arm right here. And it has a bunch of these smaller babies on there. It's so fun. This was just flowers like three weeks ago. So yeah, this, is, this has been super great. Super fun to look back and like see how much more sparse this one specifically was, especially on top. Now it's just like full of like growth. Like, I mean, it is big, so. I'm excited to see where this one will be in another two months, but this one has been very, very fun to grow. I love it. Next plant on my list is going to be my little Schifflera. This guy hasn't grown too much, I don't think. Just from looking at it, it doesn't look like that much has changed. It's still giving me tons of white new growth, which is really nice. Just looking at it, it doesn't look like it's gotten that much taller. Maybe when I'm editing, I'll see a clear difference, but I don't think it's changed that much just in terms of height. I feel like it's gotten less white variegation coming in. Still like lots of new white. I feel, oh, that's so cute. Look at the two little bunny ears right there. That's adorable. I think I expected this to be a faster grower, but maybe I just need to give it more water. Let me know. Let me know your Schifflera tips. Next one is this Burley Marks. This is my Philodendron Burley Marks. It's gotten a little bigger. Um, I think it was easier for me to hold up. If anything, it's, you can definitely tell it's growing out this way uh, because the back of my house doesn't have any windows or light so it's only getting uh, light from like one side. I think it's good. It's getting taller. Uh, that's for sure. It definitely has given me like a couple new growth points. Got a couple new spots uh, that it's doing really really good in. So yeah, very easy to take care of. Probably like one of my medium growing philodendron but definitely like very very easy care philodendron. You can see it really likes to grow that way. Next up, we have the peace lilies, and they are still huge. I mean, they're massive. They've only gotten bigger. I do cut off the flowers. It actually has a couple flowers coming in right now. Like, there's one right here, this white thing. I'm going to be cutting off. I know lilies are poisonous for cats. I don't know if the flowers on peace lilies are, but I don't even take the risk, I just cut it off. But you can see it, like I water this, the, these plants as soon as they start to droop. I didn't at first, I didn't realize how important it was, but I actually almost killed my other peace lily because I waited too long. So now I water them the second that they ask for it. But I mean, it's absolutely massive and I love it. This is one of them and now here's the other. Here's the other piece, Lily. You can see it is quite a bit smaller than the other one. That is because I had to cut off a lot of the leaves because I neglected this one when it came to the watering. Peace lilies are no joke when it comes to watering. So it lost, it lost a bunch of its leaves. The other one though, still super big. This one, a little bit smaller, but now I know peace lilies aren't joking around. When they droop, they are asking for water that second. Otherwise <laughs> they will get some yellow leaves, so. Next up, we have this fiddle leaf fig. This is my smaller fiddle leaf fig, but it's not as small as it was anymore because it gave me three new leaves all at once. It just, I put it in the window, I repotted it, and it said yes, and it gave me this massive leaf. And, ooh, where's the other one? And I think this one, this one, it gave me this like sad one first, this like weird little one. And then the two most recent big ones came in and it was like, wow, I'm here. I'm out of breath, you guys. I do not know what's wrong. Um, the fiddle leaf fig has been doing great. My other one is doing great too. Also still giving me tons of new growth, but this one so far has been a faster grower than that one. 
I know it doesn't really do a lot when I hold it up like this, but like it's getting big. It's putting out pretty, pretty darn big leaves. I love it. This was a rehab actually. It was literally dying and now it's not and it's thriving. I mean, look at the green on there. It's so good, so good. The next few plants are actually too big for me to bring to you. So I'm going to bring you to them. The first one is going to be my little fishtail palm. This plant I got, it was like this super huge, massive fishtail, probably like came up to my shoulder. And then it just like browned over the course of the next like two weeks. It got so brown and crispy. And I was like, what are you doing? What is wrong? How do I help you? And then when I went and back to Succulent Day and like asked Martha, I was like, what am I doing wrong? She was like, well, how often do you water it? And I was like, I don't know, maybe once every two weeks. And then she was like, oh, you need to give that thing so much water. And she was like, and how close is it to your window? And I mean, I had this thing like right in my south facing window and she was like, that is too close. They like more diffused bright light. So I moved it back like 10 feet and I water like every two days now. And it's given me nothing but wonderful, beautiful green leaves. If I notice something is really starting to brown, I just cut it away to kind of encourage new growth. Right now it's putting out six new fronds. We're going to see some really nice, beautiful fronds coming in here. They're nice and green and I will make sure that it stays that way this time, you guys. I promise. But it was really stressful because it was like this $70 palm and I was like, what do you want? And it was like more water, less light. And I was like, okay. Raven is just zipping around the backyard. It's so cute. The next plant I have to tell you about is actually my jasmine. This, where are you going? Uh, my jasmine has gotten so big. I've actually had to cut it back three times now and it's doing so good it's not flowering as much now but someone recently told me that jasmine only really bloom in the winter which i thought that they also bloom in the summer but maybe i'm wrong maybe it's the different kinds of jasmine i don't know all i know is it was blooming a lot it's not blooming so much anymore but it's still growing very fast i'm gonna start watering it more probably as often as i water my palm my fishtail palm but this plant is so beautiful it's climbing up my variegated string of hearts it was climbing up my pubic calyx until i pulled it out i could show you the pubic calyx it's just very happy i put it directly in my south facing window and it gets a ton of light it was crisping up a little bit on some of the leaves when i wasn't watering it a whole ton but now i water it a lot and it loves it it's so. doing a lot better and I'm really happy with it. I'm, I know it's more of like an outside plant, but I think it makes my inside look really lush and nice. And it puts out these nice tendrils that just kind of go everywhere. And I'm just very happy with it. I love it a lot. The next plant I'm going to tell you about is my ponytail palm. I technically got this plant on the 2nd of March. It was organized that I was going to be getting it in February. So I'm just going to include it. But I have Victor the 1975. He is such a beautiful ponytail palm. Love, 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 love. Can't recommend it enough. The only thing is he is really thirsty. So I think I water him every three days. That's what Vicky told me to do, the previous owner. She watered him like every three days. And he's constantly putting out new stuff at the top. He's not losing any of the old leaves. So I'm assuming that that means that he's doing good. I know in a Benji video, Benji plant, he talked about how if your plants are underwatered, they'll usually start losing the leaves at the bottom first, and then they'll start losing their newest leaves at the top later. I think at the beginning, I wasn't probably watering it as much. There was a couple ones that we ended up pulling off because it just wasn't doing so good. But I can't tell if that's just from the stress of moving him from one house where he's been for like 45 years to this new house that it's, you know, we don't have a built-in humidifier. Vicky's house has a built-in humidifier and it comes out with her air into her house, which is incredible. We don't have that. Despite the humidity deficit, he's still thriving. He's still killing it. He's still very happy, so. He's good. I just have to water him like all the time. The second to last plants I'm going to tell you about are actually all of the Monstera that I have behind me. I traded with my friend Devin in February and he traded me like two massive Monstera. Also, I traded with another gal in February for her Monstera, which ended up having root rot. So we, I did a whole video about that. And I just did a video this week where I actually potted up that plant and it's doing so well. It's like an actual plant now. It was a bunch of dead cuttings and now it's an alive monstera plant. We rehabbed ourselves and took care of ourselves, okay? So that's like a huge win for me. Not just throwing something away when it's doing bad, but like actually keeping it alive. Devin's monstera are doing so well. The big one that he gave me that's right here has given me four new leaves. It's giving me two right now. One of them is this one, this guy right here. And there's another new leaf coming in all the way down on the side right here, this thing. It's coming in around the side for some reason, but that one's giving me two new leaves. And then the other one he gave me is up here. This is a completely separate Monstera. And as you can see, we're currently getting a new leaf right there. And this little leaf right here came in not too long ago. So we're doing very good. Um, I'm happy I'm not killing his Monstera. 
I seem to have a knack for the Monstera. Yeah, those are two separate ones. I'm excited to see this one. I think when this one opens up, it's gonna be super duper nice and fun. The one he gave me is just so beautiful. All the uh, leaves are kind of starting to curve that way because that's where, you know, the light's coming from, but it's doing very, very nice and I'm very happy with it. The final plant I have to tell you guys about is actually the Syngonium Albo that I got at the end of February. I cut that plant up and I took a bunch of propagations that I'm now growing actually in the bottom of my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. I have a bunch of Syngonium that I rooted from that massive, massive plant. I'm really happy about that. Full transparency though, I did accidentally kill a lot of the nodes that I wanted to propagate that I originally did propagate. So that was really sad. <laughs> I thought that putting them in a sealed container would really help the nodes kind of come in, but all that that did was make them kind of all die. So I have about nine Syngonium still, like Syngonium albopodophyllum, in the bottom of my Ikea cabinet, but almost all the nodes except for two died, so. That's it, that's my update, my first plant haul. I was originally just gonna make it about my actual first plant haul, which is a video on this channel, my first plant haul of 2022. Um, but it only had six plants in it, so, and they were all still alive. So I was like, you know what, let's expand our horizons here a little bit. A lot of people are always like, I want to know how your plants did, like, after you bought them. Like, did you kill them? What happened? Not this time. I killed a couple of them, but, like, one of them was a rehab, so it was already three feet out the door. <laughs> one of them just got underwatered. The water plants, I just genuinely did not have the right care for them. A couple people even messaged me and they were like, oh, those are gonna die, and they were right. And then the other one is the ver the variegated red stem, which also I bought very, very shaken up. And then at the store, the friend that I was shopping with, she accidentally knocked it on the floor when it was on the cart. So it got, it was already doing bad. And then my friend knocked it on the floor and like almost all of its leaves fell off. And at that point I was like, I was literally at the store and I was like, well shit, I don't wanna buy it, but I just destroyed, like the plant just got destroyed, so now I have to. All the plants that died, except for the fedora, I'll say the only one I'm upset about is the fedora, because I actually really love begonia fedora a lot. I let it like really, really get dried out, and then when I went to rewater it, it just wasn't having it. What I have learned is plants like more water than I think that they do, especially the palms. Those ones really like a lot of water, like out of the, I mean, all the trees. Both of the fiddly figs, my massive, ponytail palm and my fishtail palm. They love water, oh my God. They cannot get enough water. I don't think you could overwater them, honestly. The, well, the fiddly fix you could. The peace lilies love water, oh my God. My tiger fern, which I didn't get until March, so I didn't include that in this video. Loving life, it is absolutely killing it. I water it every time I water my peace lilies and it just loves it, oh my God. And my jasmine, I need to definitely water more. I think every time I water my peace lilies, I'll start watering the jasmine. Other than that, all the other plants, doing totally fine. Super happy that I opted for a self-watering pot for the global green pothos, because knowing me, I just don't like to water my smaller plants that often. I think the marble queen that I got from Maggie, one of my members, I'm going to also put in a lube pot the next time I feel like I'm at a place where I want to spend money on pots. But yeah, I think just what I've learned is I think my plants like more water than I thought that they did. I think before I was letting everything dry out way too much, things just weren't growing. But now that everything is kind of getting watered a lot, I'm seeing so much growth, especially on the fishtail palm. That plant in particular, I have noticed, and I know I've said it like 30 times in this video, but it just wants as much water as you can literally give it. I don't know if it's in a pot that's too small, and so maybe that's the only reason. I've never had a plant I need to water as much as the ponytail palm. I need to water that more than the peace lilies. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but... Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and tweet me at PlantMeAshley. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at PlantMeAshley as well. And you can also join the YouTube channel memberships if you wanna join a community that loves plants. If you're having a hard time making plant friends in the community, I do highly recommend that you join the channel memberships. You'll probably make a couple friends in the Discord. There's some people who are like around all the time who just love to chat. And I also wanna thank Zimf so much for sponsoring this video. Right now, I am currently wearing my Zimf Afro glasses. I constantly get questions about these on Instagram and YouTube, specifically this pair. I have four of this pair of glasses. I love them so much. 
They are kind of like a fun, really big eye tortoiseshell glasses. Mine are really dirty because like, again, I actually wear my glasses. I also have like blue light and scratch protection stuff. Ziv does take insurance and they also do provide really, really cheap glasses, but really high quality for the amount that you're spending. My friends wear Zimp, my members wear Zimp. Like you can usually get two to three pairs for just under like $120. And then if you use code Ashley at checkout, you'll get 50% off of your frames and 20% off of your lenses. Cannot recommend Zimp enough. I have so many wonderful pairs. I absolutely love them. You guys love Aphrodite. I do too. So thank you so much Zimp for sponsoring this video and working with me. Zimp also worked with me really closely when. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to check out Zimp and use code Ashley at checkout. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next houseplant section. Goodbye.